Okay. Hi, Christos. How are you? I'm doing very well, Doug. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Nice to see you. You know, when I first read through your bio, the movie Risky Business came to mind. It's a classic. I, if I could, you know, match up to one one hundredth of, of that production, I, I think I'd be quite happy. <laughs> but you didn't run a uh, house of ill repute from your school, did you? No, no I, I, ke I kept it a little more, uh, you know, PG-13 maybe. He went the whole way, so. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, let me just read this. It says, when you were 15, your parents enrolled you in a prestigious boarding school in Saskatchewan. And did you have Correct. a hard time while you were there? Uh, I think everyone did. You know, initially, your grade nine year, you're, you're away from home, you're away from your family. It was an adjustment. But, you know, you made fast friends. And most of which that I went to school with from that grade forward, are I'm still quite, quite close with now and very fortunate to have those relationships but yeah I, I do believe um there were certain hard times that we all we had all gone through did you miss being away from your family or were you happy to be away i think initially it was it was kind of tough and i mean you go through moments where you, you know you wish you had them around but when you you look around you're like wow i'm having a sleepover with 40 of my closest buddies every night like this isn't so bad and those individuals became my family so it was a lot easier to be detached from my blood family. You were there for four years? Uh, I was there 9, 10, 11 um, uh, for part of it, and then I went back for grade 12, yes. Tell me about what happened that you started. Uh, I'm not sure what it was that you were selling. Was it liquor you were selling there? I was selling liquor, yeah. So my grade 9 year, I, I wasn't really exposed to the, the underworld of alcohol selling, um, but my grade 10 year... Uh, a little bit more mischievous, a little bit older, thought it was a little bit cooler, which totally was not true. And, you know, these older kids, I learned their operation. And we had this, like, we had, like, pizza night. And we used to do it, you know, Friday and Saturday. And what you would do is you'd collect a sum of money from each kid and he'd get a smaller and medium pizza. And let's say the cost of the pizza at the time was, like, $8. We would charge 10 or whoever was doing the pizza order would charge 10 and then that way they could make a couple bucks or eat for free or what have you. That would be their, their you know, cost for labor, you'd say. Well, then I realized they had the same type of system for booze. But the profit margin was drastically higher than the pizza. And I like to drink. So I was like, okay. I started, these guys are like, if you get us 20 sales, we'll give you a free, you know, flask or, you know, Mickey, we called them in Canada. So I was drinking for free every Friday and Saturday. And I, at a young age, I, I had a drinking problem. Because it was so accessible to me. Now, you think that that's crazy because you're, you are in the middle of nowhere. But if you want something bad enough, you would find a way to get it. Well, wait a minute. Okay, first of all, all you guys were underage, right? The drinking oh, yeah. age was, what was it, 18 or 21 in Canada? In Canada was 18. Something tells me at the time in Saskatchewan it was 19. Okay. I'm going to make a note of that and, and um, look into it. But yeah, 18 or 19 was the legal drinking age. Okay, so who was selling you the beer? The pizza place? No, so it wasn't beer. We would do hard liquor only. Oh, hard liquor. But there okay. were kids in grade 12, and they had been there for a couple of years, so they had connections, uh, be it kids that lived in the, in the town, which was I think there was only like 400 people, or people they had met in the city over the years. So they were getting someone that was of age, and then that person was getting paid. So they'd, they'd collect all the money for the you know, liquor order, then they would give it to this one individual with a list and that guy would bring it back and then they would distribute it out. And I would distribute it to the guys that the guys that I went to and like kind of like going door to door and selling chocolate bars. I was doing the same thing with liquor. And then you were making a profit for yourself doing that. I was just drinking for free. Like I didn't care about making money. I was like, I get this. I get this for free every weekend. Oh, I see. And okay. I was doing this every weekend. I want to say until January. And then I started like spending a lot of time with a girl there and she was like, hey, we became good friends. She's like, hey, I, like, I want you to quit drinking because I think it had kind of gotten around that, you know, it was getting a little out of control. And I was young, too. It was only like 16, I think. And um, I did. I quit. It had always always in the back of my mind of like how profitable it was. So when I went home, my grade, the summer of grade 10 I was working with my brother at like my family's pizza place 
And I was explaining to him like how much money they made and, and this and that. And then we came up with this big plan that he would mail me alcohol in water bottles. So we would get vodka or white rum, which is clear. You put it in a water bottle, it looks like water. And we completely flipped the script on the operation because we had less um, overhead, less people involved. And it was going from him to meet and then to final sale. It was obviously more accessible. Uh, and it was great until it wasn't. And, you know, I don't want to give too much away. I'd love for people to read it, but it's a completely true story, as crazy as it sounds. And that's kind of the that's kind of the just of what happened. Okay, So your family actually had a ran a pizza place, had a pizza shop. Yeah, we, we did for many years. We actually still do now. Like, we have like a gas station. And we have a, a like a, a pizza area within the gas station. So it's kind of cool. We've always taken that with us wherever we've gone on with business ventures. So I assume you graduated from school. Did you ever get caught by the school? Um, I don't ever say that I got caught as, as much as some teachers will say that I got caught. I told on myself. I just I realized as I was telling them what I was doing, how little they knew about our operation. And I think that I was sick of hiding it. it. It became quite stressful. And it was it felt great to just get it off my chest, um, regardless of what the outcome was. But I, I was never caught. No. But we did they, they were they were we had these things that are called locker searches. And it's nothing to brag about. But this is just the fact. Most kids get a locker search like once or twice a year. Well, if they they suspect you're screwing around or doing something, it would probably be a little bit more frequent. I remember I was getting locker searched at one time twice a week and they were trying to find the alcohol. But we had a whole system set up and they never caught me with booze. I was never caught with alcohol, with sums of cash, anything like that. So after you got out of school, what did you do? After I got out of school, I, I think it hit me pretty hard that I should have paid more attention. Um, when all your friends go away to university and what have you, I, I was washing dishes in my one of my father's restaurants. It was more like a sit-down restaurant. And I think pretty soon on, maybe like a couple months in, I was like, holy shit, like this is my life now. Like not to degrade anybody that washes dishes because it's good money, but I had this image of college being such a good time that, that, I, that I was missing out on. So I, I did a lot of jobs, mostly with my family. And then I actually ran a liquor store for my family for about eight years, which many of my old teachers found extremely comical. And I actually really enjoyed it. It was sales, except this time I wasn't doing it illegally. We, I did that for about eight years. I live in the United States now. Uh, but yeah, mostly just jobs with my family and, and, and things like that. That's kind of how that developed. But dishwashing was my first actual paid occupation. So what do you do now? I do a lot of import-export. Um, I source retail goods or furniture from pe for people direct from manufacturer. I'm writing more. Uh, I plan to do another book here quite soon and just kind of seeing where the winds take me. I'm still um, involved uh, doing grocery transfers with my family back in Canada. Uh, but other than that, I had a, you know, not to get too far into it, but I had a major heart surgery about 10 years ago. And uh, that is the, probably the main reason I, I, I relocated to um, Nevada, dry heat. It's easier on my body and just taking it in strides. I went back to school for confectionery science so the study of candy and help gas stations to set up candy elements within already existing or brand new stores so a little bit of everything i just like to have fun it's it's not so much about the the monetary reward but i'm, I'm having a good time okay so your book is called wild dogs and the book just is basically this story that we've been kind of talking about i i think any it's coming it's definitely a coming of age story anybody that whether they're younger than me or older than me uh, or a kid may be able to go into high school that maybe feels like they've screwed up so bad that they can't come back from it. I think this shows people that there's nothing you can't come back from. And it, it is a comeback story. It is a true story. And it, it doesn't just have me, you know, selling the, this alcohol, but it has, you know, your first, uh, first experiences, first time drinking, first girlfriend, first time getting in serious trouble. And, you know, wanting to be a man, wanting to fit in and what everybody goes through. I think it's something that's unavoidable um, when when you're younger. And the book is out now and available, right? The book has been out since August 17th of last year. 
it's done. You know, I just wanted to write a book and make my friends laugh and it's done incredibly well. And we're just rolling with this and um, in conversations with different studios to turn it into a movie. And it's just like, it's just mind blowing to even be considered, um, you know, whether you get a yes or no answer. I, it, it just, it feels real. It's just a really cool feeling. And I'm just, I'm loving every minute of this. Well, it sounds like it would make a great movie. Like I said, it reminded me of Risky Business right off the bat when I read this, but this is sort of a different twist. Same concept. When I started writing, I had a movie in mind before I even wrote the first word. And I remember when I was younger, we had a we had a convenience store and there was a the very small sections where my mom and dad rented movies. And I remember I grabbed this, you know, I just saw these four kids on the front and I thought it was like a, maybe like a comedy. And I grabbed Rob Reiner's Stand By Me. And I didn't read the, the, the synopsis on the back or anything. And that movie made me, you know, laugh, cry, scared the shit out of me. And I think at that age, it, was, it like, you know, jumped out of the screen and grabbed me. And I, I never felt that way about a film before up until that point. And it just made me fall in love with how this guy did this. And this is at a time when there's no, you know, if you had internet, which we didn't, it was slow getting information. A lot of the time was the telephone. And I, I was so intrigued by this, by this person's story. And at the end of that movie, it, it's Richard Dreyfus, and he's, he's typing. I think it's Richard Dreyfus, isn't it? Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen that. I think so. But I, don't I think, wanna, it, but, I but think it is. Yeah. Essentially, you have someone typing on a, typing it out, and it, it, the movie was a story, and that always just stuck with me. I'm like, that is just so cool, and and that I mean, that's the classic movie. Anybody that says it doesn't, they don't like that movie, is is a liar. Well, I remember it being a great film, but it has to be 30 years, at least, since yeah. I've seen it. It's worth a rewatch for sure. It's just, it's. You know, you have kids from different backgrounds. That, that's what I went through at private school. You had some kids that wanted to be good but turned bad or, or were, were in a bad situation and got better. And that sums up life. Those, those characters in that movie summed up being an adolescent. So just really, really stuck with me. And, you know, still to this day, obviously, it's one of my favorite movies. And I think, you know, if I was offered a sum of money a great sum of money to do a movie, but someone said, hey, you can do it with Rob Reiner for 400 grand before taxes. I would I would do it with Rob Reiner in a heart, heartbeat because he made art. He didn't make movies. And that's essentially what I, I would love to do. And I don't know what will happen. It's, it's all quite new to me, but I'm, I'm having a blast just learning, essentially. Well, I think that's great. And I think that if you're learning something, that's really the most important part Absolutely. of the whole thing. You know. Uh, Christos, we do have to wind this down. We are out of time. Thanks so much for coming on. Do you have a website you want to give out? We have right now people can reach me. Um, social media, Stosi187, S-T-O-S-Y-187. Uh, if they just type in wild dogs, um, it'll pop up. I haven't really ever really been to too much for the social media type stuff. So I actually have people handling all that. But um, if you just Google my name, um, I think it's quite easy to navigate if, if people want to learn more or get in touch with me. Okay. All right. Well, thanks again for coming on and best of luck with all of uh, your projects and endeavors. I hope uh, things go well for you. Thanks so much for having me, Doug, and I really appreciate you.